Now on this video, I want to share a little tip that I've learned over the years that may help you have a little bit nicer braking. Now this bike here is now 26 years old and over the years I've owned it about the last five. One of the issues it's always had from time to time it has it, the, the front brake gets, and I know everybody that has a sport bike knows that feeling of when the brakes, the rotors warp, you get the pulsing at various speeds or sometime all the time. Now a lot of the times it's just that you have one or both rotors warped, in which case you got to replace the rotors. But there's a little thing you can do that'll make it better. It'll just make it physically better. Sometimes what you can do, and, and in this case I've done it to this bike several times and it works really well. I've I've had this pulsing, especially after a track day, and it's annoying to ride with that, but I've got it to the point where after I do the maintenance tip that I'm going to show, and it's not a, it's not a, a, you know, a space shuttle trick, this is common maintenance for sport bikes, it'll reduce it to maybe where you almost can't feel it. Now, I'm sure that step one would be, if you were talking to, if you were talking to somebody that money was no object, you replace both rotors, possibly with upgraded wave rotors, at which time you got to replace the pads. And by the time you're done, you're probably in the five to six hundred dollar range. Where what I'm going to show is basically cleaning the bobbins. Now, what happens? To, these are called bobbins. They attach the the physical rotor to the to the carrier. And what happens? At least in my experience, from time to time, they corrode. In this case, it's probably definitely corrosion, or the plating wears out on if these are painted or plated. In these, in this case, they're not. It's 26 years old. They're definitely corroded. And when you clean one, you'll notice rust and goop and brake dust and everything will just come out. Well, cleaning them is not a big deal. Now, here's the point that I wanted to make: is not all sport bikes. This bike, there are these are not floating rotors. These rotors are attached solidly to the wheel like a GS Suzuki is and then the caliper is on a slider well that's a whole different animal and it's a whole different uh, well next time we pull this front end apart I'll show what I've done to make that as good as it can be and it, they're really modern sport bikes they, they probably need just a minimum of maintenance I'd say once a year it's a good idea to check just put your finger in here and if you can spin the buttons they're probably fine. If you put your finger in here and can't spin the buttons, they probably need to be cleaned. And they corrode normally. It's a normal part, eh, a normal part of any maintenance for any bike, even these old bikes like the RD where the brakes are, this is really 70s technology. There's no floating, the, the calipers are the only thing that move. So just keeping everything nice and clean is probably in your favor. but. As we go down a line, and I can tell you for sure, this is a for sure thing. Old GS Suzuki's, the, the technology at the time was, <clears throat> and I believe the material they used was just not high quality material, because they had recalls on these, the rotors got replaced. I've had three or four sets of rotors. They all warped at some point in time. This, this little trick clean the bobbins won't do you any good unless you have bobbins. Now notice, here's something. These are replacement EBC rotors for the Suzuki. These rotors have bobbins. So if we had these rotors on that bike, which at some point in time maybe we will put these on, I'll take those and do the same trick of cleaning. It's, it's basically a thing of cleaning the bobbins. And modern bikes, especially if they're new, you can put your finger in here and just turn that at will. Well. There's always a little wave wa a wave washer on a street bike, and what the wave washer does, it keeps this from chattering at low speeds. Now I've heard, but I don't know for sure, that some bikes leave out the wave washer and put a flat washer in there, and, and it gives this a little more play, possibly some advantage on a track day, but the downside is at low speeds, you can hear this rattling around. Now, we just did the rotor on Glenn's track bike and that was the case and I even checked with Luciano to see if that was going to be some kind of an issue we should deal with and he said no his TZ had the same thing so 
What might happen in the near future is I'll take these non-floating rotors and when I feel I have a, have a day to spend out here, put on the floaters, maybe with some kind of an upgrade. I don't know if that's going to really be what I want or if it's going to be a lot better. But I notice basically just cleaning the bobbins, it almost always results in the two possibilities. If you clean them real well and they do have play, whatever you have pulsing in the lever will get better. It'll never get worse because these rotors, they, sh they should ha be able to move side to side ever so slightly. I mean, the thickness of a piece of paper maybe. But when they're locked in and all that goop and, and rust gets in there, they can't move and that it throws them out of kilter enough that it results in the pulsing at the lever. So I'm going to show you how I've done it in the past. Not a secret way of doing it, by the way. I mean, everybody I know from Kenny Augustine to, uh, I'm sure Luciano, I'm sure everybody knows that trick. But this is, I've come up with a couple of different ways to do it. And I think it'll work. It takes less than an hour to do a whole bike. And you'll be impressed with how well it works at the lever. Unless, of course, you have really warped rotors. In which case, it'll make it better, but it won't totally solve the problem. But in some cases, and on a red bike, it can, it can be, I know I've done it a few times, it'll make it a lot better. And then a year or two later, you have to do it again. Well, you know, that's like an oil change. That's normal maintenance. But I do remember coming back from a track day and thinking, oh, I'm going to buy rotors. I'm going to buy rotors. And pricing out the rotors and... Then I remember, oh yeah, I remember cleaning those, that might make it better. And it works for a back brake too, if you have a floater. And it costs almost no money, and it takes less than an hour to do a bike. And there's a good chance you'll have a nice performance upgrade at the end of it. So let's get started and see how this works out. Well, the first step, of course, is just to get a bolt, any short bolt, a nut, some washers that are the appropriate size. I'm kind of looking around here because I had some washers that I used for this in the past that Ray gave me that had rubber backing that were nice. They didn't scratch anything, but in lieu of having them, well, we could just take one washer off of here and it'd be fine. But it's, it's really simple stuff. You need a, a bolt, two washers, and a nut. And by the way, that's what makes this an easy uh, thing to do is there's no high-tech stuff to doing it. You don't need any special tools. So I'll start with the R1 being this is the easiest one to do. And because it's the most modern of the bikes we have, usually there's the least amount of corrosion on this. You can just put the bolt through, put a washer through. All this is meant to do, and I did, I had that thing of rubber washers. They were rubber on one side. Ray had given them to me. You need to make this tight, of course. And then all we want to do from this point on, let me just show this up close. What you have, whoops, what you have in, in essence is You've just grabbed the bobbin. So you can turn it. Now there's a lot of ways to turn it. You can tighten a nut to, a, to as tight as you want. It won't matter. And then just turn this with a socket wrench. Sometimes it's a good idea to turn it. If you really feel it's tight, turn it back and forth. But ultimately you'd like to have these that they're, they move. Once they're frozen in place and they start to corrode, it's like a bolt freezing in place. It doesn't do you any good at the lever. At the lever, it's a real problem when it, when it corrodes on one side more than the other. And it's especially, especially true if you do a lot of riding in bad weather, when the roads are salty, or, or anything that adds to corrosion, or you don't park your bike in a, a heated air-conditioned garage, which uh, seems like none of us have anyway. Okay, just to do a quick, if this is not real, real scientific. This is AutoZone brake cleaner. What happens with some brake cleaners, not all but some, they are they act as paint remover just like brake fluid does. So what I always do when I'm doing this kind of thing is I try to protect the wheel unless of course you don't uh, have polished wheels and we want to try to protect this a little bit. Now you could minimize this by just putting this down at the bottom, but I thought for shooting video, that wouldn't be real good. Let's see if we can make our point here. What happens is this, this has got brake dust, corrosion. And now if I turn this, and, and it doesn't take a lot of force to turn this, you can turn it by hand. 
what I'm actually doing is turning the whole bobbin. And I see some goopers already coming out of there. So sometimes, I've seen guys do this with an electric drill. You can do that too. But the, the idea is to get it as clean as possible. Once, this, once it starts spraying clean, I've heard guys put some kind of high temperature stuff in there. I don't. I don't want any of that in there. Now once one is done, you can usually tell because the spray that comes out will be perfectly clean. Now this is method two, you can just put on your drill using a slow speed. Now, until you get to the point that these spin relatively easily, it would tell you, well, this loosened up, but it would tell you that you still have, if you have resistance in here, it's not good. So just doing the physical cleaning is a big help. Now after doing that, and the way I can tell is I just, I can feel the resistance. Now I've got almost none. There's just, it's not gonna spin free. It's gonna be just a little bit of resistance. And I've got that one done. And I can go on to some of them. And if you're doing this religiously, what you'll find out is some of them are really tight. Those are the ones you got to work with the drill. Some of them are loose. You can just work with the wrench. Or you can just ignore the whole thing and just deal with the lever being a little uh, whatever. But, but I know that I've never done this and had anything negative happen. It's always something good. And it, it'll always make it better. And it might save you from wrongfully buying a five or six hundred dollar set of rotors and pads. Now after we're done with the cleaning you can see some of the goop that comes out of there it's definitely look it's dripping down the group the, the it's a combination of a lot of things the, the brake rotor dust now I can turn that nice and smooth and now we only have uh, well, 15 or a <laughs> hundred more to do but if you do that religiously probably once every year or two it should minimize that pulsing at the at the lever which and if it doesn't work it really didn't cost you a lot of money now on some bikes and we do what I do I try to go spend a day like today when I'm not gonna ride to go out and do the maintenance on all of them so this is a relatively new bike so like the R1 there shouldn't be too much stuff there's plenty of stuff in there something always comes out no matter what you do now on some bikes, it, it, there's some more stuff, wow. Now it's this way, it, it's made this way because the rotors expand at a different rate than probably than the steel. Or they, but they, keep in mind, the rotors want to have some play in them, some freedom. That's what makes modern rotors, one of the things that makes modern rotors so good. Also this wave and the holes let more of the heat out. So. You want to take advantage of these modern brakes, and they are so good. This bike is just wonderful. And again, you can do this with a drill. You can do it by hand. That, that isn't the whole point. The point is you can feel when there's resistance. And when you're done cleaning it, it should, ooh, some more stuff comes out. You can feel it getting better and better. Now, this bike has very little pulsing at the brake, very little. But as long as I'm doing maintenance, I'd rather over maintain something than under maintain it. Now see, as I'm doing this, at some point in time you can feel it free up. It just frees up because what you're doing, you're kind of just resetting the clearance and getting rid of all of that stuff that's in there. Now, some bikes, they have, these, these don't have a hole in them, like the FZR, and you have to settle for just totally trying to clean it as much as you can you really can't spin it with a drill, not realistically anyway, but they do make replacement bobbins and that's probably one of the things at some future time I'll, I'll look at getting for the FCR so I can do that. In the meantime I just do a thorough cleaning. Now the other thing like on the FCR you wouldn't think it but the back is where a lot of this is. So what I'm going to do I'm going to turn this around see, because I'm trying to show this. Oh, you really can't. You have to move the camera. Let me move the camera. 
so you can see what happens. Now a lot of times what you have to do, and this just happens to be one case, the stuff in the back, and I can see a lot of it coming out already, and then spin this, and once you spin it, what you'll see is more stuff coming out. Now each bike is just a little bit different in my experience, but they all suffer from the same thing. They get these buttons get corroded. There's there's no realistic way you can lubricate them. You don't want to. You sure don't want to put grease or anything on them. But to keep that clearance nice and keep all the all the corrosion out. And it's really, to me, this is kind of preventive maintenance because when the brakes are working nice and smooth, uh, it's a joy. When you have that pulsing lever issue, it just can be really annoying. Now once it's all done, I'm going to get the compressor, set it to 125 pounds and blow out whatever I can out of there, and then clean the whole rest of the wheel, but I want to clean it with a perfectly clean microfiber. I don't want to get anything on the disc. The only thing on the disc will be brake parts cleaner. The stuff we use in it's AutoZone brake parts cleaner. Don't get this on the paint of the bike and don't get it in your eyes. Now on the FZR we have to really spend a lot of time, actually it takes more time doing it this way, cleaning these bobbins from the back because it's, it's difficult to spin them. Some of them, some of them are really locked up pretty tight. But just cleaning them is a big step in the right direction. Now since these are permanent rivets and we can't realistically spin them the way we'd like to, and I've tried a lot of things to, I, I've thought of a lot of things, I could maybe make a rubber uh, tool that would grab this or something, but this is, this is another way to get, because remember, we're not really worried about spinning them. The main thing is to get the goop out from underneath. And to do it both ways, if you, if you were to look at this real close, you'd see I'm moving the rotor. I don't want to bend it with a crowbar. I just want to put a slight amount of force on it. Let me see if I can show this. I'm not sure. Just once you do this, you see a lot more stuff come out from behind it. Now, of course, you got to do it both ways. I have to reverse it, get any other side. I, I'll have to move the camera for that. But anything you can do to get that corrosion out of there, Sometimes you have to be a little creative. It's amazing, but now this is a 26 year old bike. So there is a lot of stuff. And I know in the past when I've done this, I've been amazed at what comes out of there. Right, that one's really bad. And as much as I've cleaned them, what happens is I go back and clean it a half hour later and more stuff will come out. Oh, that one's really dirty too. So the whole point is, and if you look at the rack, Sometimes you don't want to ride the bike. But the, but the bottom line is, no matter how you do it, cleaning that out, that would be really nice. A beautiful thing would be if we had the rotors off the bike, we're doing a tire change, we could pull the rotors real quick. It's not worth, to me, to do separate maintenance because I'm always a believer in, like, when you have to change the tire, that's a good time if you wanted to polish this or if you wanted to do something here or repaint the fender. Well, it's not to do things redundantly is when you're doing one thing if we're going to do a tire change let's do that or we're going to do replace replace the brake pads or to, to do things in in combination where it makes sense that you're not doing work three or four times now the other part is now that we've done this I need to get around the other side of the bike I need to move the camera because I'm going to do the back of this now and I'm not sure I can get the camera in the right position but again I'm not Steven Spielberg but then you're not Robert Redford either, so I guess we're even. You know, I'm not sure we're going to have a, a great camera angle here. We're limited, of course. But I did want to show. I like to show it in real time if I can. I can get my, just to pull this pad away. And I'm not putting a lot of force, a very little force. Oh, that stuff just comes right out. It's amazing what comes out of there. But again, this is an older bike. And if I were able to spin the, bo the bobbins, that would make it easier, but... 
Again, one of the things for my uh, near future, I'd like to replace the bobbins so I have the ability to spin them. It just makes the cleanup a little easier. But in, in my case, I enjoy doing this. I enjoy the maintenance parts of the bike. Now that really is, at, now what's happening, even though I've done this, watch what happens. You do it again, let me get the bar. It seems like every time you do this, more stuff comes out because it gets loosened up in there. And see, I can move the rotor. I'm not sure we're getting great camera angles here, but I can move the rotor when I do that. But if you know the theory of what has to happen, in a perfect world, the bobbins would have just a hand tight feel, but not be frozen in place and not have a lot of extra brake dust, corrosion on them. And of course, the older the bike is, the more important it is to do this kind of maintenance. Now, one of the last things is I try to get the compressor up. What this does is try anything that's still in there. Now we spent, oh, maybe a little better than an hour. And it looks like uh, the next step is to take a little test ride down to our, uh, our little private place that we can test things without the police making us crazy and see how these brakes perform. Every time I do this and clean the bobbins, I go out on a little, this is my little test area here where nobody seems to bother you. And I'm amazed at how good it works. Now, in this case, the pulsing at the lever is gone. So, it sometimes it only gets 80, 90% better. This is the best it's ever done because I really was careful about cleaning it. If you rotate the bobbins, it's even better, but anyway. All I can say is thanks for watching this and, and hopefully you can pass this tip on to other people that ride motorcycles. Thanks for watching.